infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, I recently had a long conversation with an associate professor of infectious disease and international medicine at USF Health, Sandra Gomp, MD, about a myriad of infectious disease topics from her handy book, Gomp's ID Pearls. And one of the topics I asked her about was African sleeping sickness. Let's take a listen. In, in your book, you discuss... Uh, African trypanosomiasis or African sleeping sickness, uh, yeah. not not seen here, but uh, it can it can be travel associated. Um, mm-hmm. What are the two forms of African sleeping sickness? What's the vector? How do you diagnose it? And the most difficult thing, how do you treat it? Yes, and that part is is difficult. Uh, fortunately, we don't see it very often. Uh, here, even worldwide, the incidence has declined quite a bit for both of them. Um, but there are two uh, types. There's the eastern um, uh, trypanosomiasis, which is caused by Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiens, and there's the western Trypanosoma brucei gambiens. And um, both of them are transmitted by the bite of the tsetse fly. And the tsetse flies are, uh, they live in the rural sub-Saharan Africa uh, area, in, mostly in the savannas and woods, bushes. The people who are most likely to be exposed would be uh, people who are visiting game parks, who are hunting perhaps in game parks in those rural areas. And both of these um uh, forms of trypanosomiasis will present early on with a chancre or sore at the site of the bite and with fevers. Um, as time goes on and for eastern trypanosomiasis, it's early within the first, uh, first to six weeks of exposure, uh, patients may develop fevers and fatigue. Swollen lymph nodes are very common, especially the cervical nodes, and they will progress uh, to develop confusion and neurologic uh, deterioration uh, to coma uh, if they're not treated. Western trypanosomiasis, same thing, except that may take months to years. Um, for if if Eastern trypanosomiasis is suspected. Uh, it really should be considered a, an emergency. It's extremely rare, but is very high consequence, very high mortality if it is not treated, and it may be difficult to recognize. You may have to have a high suspicion related to travel and exposure. Now, Eastern uh, uh, African trypanosomiasis is found uh, in East or Southeast Africa, and Tanzania uh, tends to report uh, a lot of cases. For Western, it's Central and West Africa. Uh, Congo, Uganda uh, uh, tend to report cases. For both of these conditions, uh, you can uh, look at spinal fluid to make the diagnosis, and you want to know uh, whether there is meningitis involved. For Eastern trypanosomiasis, it is uh, diagnosed fairly readily on blood smears. For Western trypanosomiasis, it's been going on for a longer time. Uh, generally, you have to aspirate a lymph node uh, in the neck uh, in order to find it. And the treatment for both of those, uh, th- these are diseases where you have to... Uh, uh, seek the assistance of the CDC uh, uh, um, for sure because um, they are difficult to treat. The the drugs, the FDA approved drugs that are available, um, uh, really is pentamidine, but there are other drugs that maybe should not be used uh, in certain cases with pentamidine, and there are other drugs that are only available through the CDC 
that the patient may need, especially with meningitis. So you definitely need to reach out to the CDC for both the diagnosis and the treatment and management of trypanosomiasis. Certainly, if you have a traveler coming back from uh, eastern or southeast Africa with a fever uh, and swollen lymph nodes, uh, sore, you should reach out to the CDC and, and have a discussion about whether that patient could possibly have uh, trypanosomiasis. Right. I don't know if you mentioned the vector, uh, the CC fly. Yes, if, the if, CC fly. From what I understand, that's quite a painful bite, so it's not like something you're mm-hmm. not going to remember. <laughs> so. Yes, and it yeah, and it does um, tend to leave if well, with the infection, it tends to leave the a sore, uh, a shanker. So yes, people will likely remember that, uh, and at least be able to to show you a bite. 